Welcome back to the Team to Beat Miami Heat basketball podcast. My name is Amir. If you're listening to this on Spotify and Apple, thank you so much for following. If you're watching on the YouTube channel, thank you so much for subscribing. This is going to be a quick post-game show. The Miami Heat lost last night, Game 3, against the Boston Celtics at the Kaseya Center, 104-84 to in a devastating loss. Uh, super frustrating. I was at the game last night. Um Going to the game on Monday, as you can see, say a center right behind me. Uh, super frustrating that I flew out all the way from California to watch the Heat get destroyed. Um, tough, tough game to be at. Tough loss for the Miami Heat. Super ugly from the start on Saturday. The hot, the Heat were obviously shorthanded. Once again, the story of the year for the Miami Heat, always injured. No surprises there. So Jimmy Butler out, Terry Rozier out, and then... A late game scratch. DeLon Wright was out for personal reasons. I think that um, was unfortunate for the Miami Heat. He's been playing pretty decent in the playoffs off the bench. And so the Miami Heat, shorthanded per usual, started off the game extremely slow. And that has been a downfall for the Miami Heat against the Celtics in their two losses in this series. So the Heat opened the game just one for 13 and they were oh for six from three in the first six minutes which is just unacceptable against this boston celtics team they're the number one offense or were in the regular season the number two defense and so they're capable of scoring more than you and they're also capable of being a def better defensive team than you so if they come out hot and we come out cold that's going to be the ball game for the most part because, one, our offense is not good enough without Jimmy Butler, without Terry Rozier. And even with them, you know, we were still the 27th um, team in terms of points per game. We were also the 21st offensive ranked team, uh, according to offensive ranking or uh, rating, excuse me. So we're just simply not good enough offensively to come back against the Boston Celtics if we come out slow. And so the Miami had 12 points total in the first quarter in a playoff game, which is just unreal. And we were only down by nine, though, because, again, the Miami Heat, our offense is putrid at times, but our defense is really good. We're a top five defensive rated team, and that's going to help us survive in this series. And so the Miami Heat were uh, five of 21 by the end of the quarter. So 23%, not good enough. Um, they were one for nine from three, 11%. That's not going to cut it. Like, again, we have to live and die by the three, which I'll get into um, in order to beat this team. Unless uh, we don't make that many threes, we need to play perfect across the board. We need to rebound. We need to play amazing defensively. We need to hit threes efficiently. We need to hit from just all over the, the, the court effectively and efficiently um cut down on turnovers like we need to play a near perfect game to win against the celtics or hit a barrage of threes and we weren't able to do that but in this game the celtics didn't come out great either they only scored 21 points um they had a nine point lead going into the second quarter which it should have been much worse when the heat only scored 12 points if you think about that, if they are scoring their seasons and averages, which is like in the 30s per quarter, then it would have been a complete blowout in the first quarter. So they struggled to make shots as well. They were 9 for 24 in the first um, quarter, 37%, not good. They were 3 for 10 from 3, 30%. That's way better than our 11. Um, but either way, like we had an opportunity, but then in the second quarter, they just absolutely destroyed us. They had 42 points, um, so their offensive struggles ended. After the first quarter, ours seemed to continue, but they were not as bad as the first quarter where we scored 12 points. So we scored 27 and in the second quarter. They scored 42. But with that, we were down by 24 or so going into half, which is not a recipe for success for this Miami Heat team. The Heat scored just 39 points total in the first half and committed nine turnovers, which is really bad because we usually do a good job of protecting the ball. So after that, I mean, the Heat, you know, we're down by 29 at one point in the third quarter. We chipped away to like 18, 
17, and then it got back up to the 20s. It was a tough game, man. The Miami Heat scored 84 total points in a game, which is just not great. Again, the silver lining is we did better than them in the second half. I think we um, we scored 45 to their 44. So, you know, we outscored them in the second half. But at that point, that's just a moral victory. Um, but we did hold them to 104 points, um, which is which is good. I mean, they are an offensive juggernaut. They averaged 100 and like 15 points or whatever it was per game in the regular season. The number one like offense that was like one of the most historic offensive ratings in NBA history. And so we're able to play good on defense. It's just our offense has not been good enough, man. And that's the unfortunate aspect. Um, Spo said in post-game interviews, they were more physical than us. They outbodied us. They got through the screens better. Um, they had more energy. They were more tenacious. And Bam and Haywood, they understand we need to be more physical. Defense is our identity. We need to fight through screens. We need to box out better. We need to take care of the ball. So those are some things that the Miami Heat need to improve on. And, you know, Bam going through the players, Bam played okay. Um there's a lot of responsibility that he shoulders right now with Jimmy Butler out. Um, but 20 points, nine rebounds, two assists. Um, not bad, but not great. We need him to play like a superstar. Um, and that's unfortunate, again, because we're shorthanded. So we need Bam to get like 25 and 10 and maybe four assists. He needs to play make. He needs to be more effective. Eight for 18, not horrible, but not great. Four for six from the line. He missed two big free throws at one point when the Heat were cutting into the lead. So he needs to clean up that. Um, that's been an issue for the last few months. Um, Caleb Martin, non-existent, you know, after having a spectacular game two, six for seven for three, uh, 21 points. He took four shots, man. Two for four, five points. Three rebounds, two assists. Um, not acceptable. One for two from three. Just... What are you doing out there, man? He he said in a quote, I was trying to get my my teammates more involved. I was being too passive. I need to be more aggressive. It's like, yeah, obviously, we need you to be an X-Factor offensively. There's only so much that our Jays, Hovich, Jovich, and Jaime can actually do. And they've been playing spectacular, man. They've been playing wonderful for their first time in the playoffs. Like, kudos to them. But, Caleb, you're one of our vets. Now you are playing for a contract. You need to put together, string together better games. And like, I don't care that you're not a star, but like you can't have five points. Like give us 10, give us 12, get like to your season average of 10, you know, like a lot of times with these heat games that are frustrating in losses is that like players are significantly far away from their season averages in terms of points. And that makes our offense struggle even further. So Caleb needs to step up next game. He needs to play balls to the wall, be aggressive, um, and needs to go out shooting. Um, the youngins, man, the kids, like I mentioned, just been a revelation for this Miami Heat team. They're going to be a part of our core. Um, Jovic, Nico's growing in front of her eyes, 20 years old, 15 points, eight rebounds, one assist, five for 11 from the field, three for five from three, one block, one steal, no turnovers. Like, are you kidding me? Only three fouls, too, in a playoff game? He's been spectacular. He's our stretch four that we've needed. He's our point four that we've needed. So I could see him playing as, like, the Lamar Odom role um, when he was on the Miami Heat with Dwayne Wade and Karan Butler before he got traded, just being our point forward, um, helping us mitigate our poor half-court offense. Just I think we need to play with more pace, more transition basketball coast to coast like I, we need to unleash him he's been great no complaints there Jaime Hawkins 12 points five rebounds five assists um five for 13 not great but at least he's putting up 13 shots we need him to oh for three from three was which is unfortunate um he had a block three turnovers again that's going to be an issue with Nico and Jaime is just they're young and experienced and um need to clean up on their turnovers, but can't complain there. Like they did what they had to do. They're being consistent. The player that's not being consistent is Tyler hero. Like we all gave him his flowers, like awesome, spectacular game, Tyler. Like you 
showed up big time in game two. You won us the game, essentially. And you follow that up with 15 points, two rebounds, two assists, five for 16 from the field. Like, come on. Like, you need to be more effective. Three for nine from three, two for two from the line, four turnovers, man. Like, just some boneheaded, careless turnovers. And you need to clean that up. But also just... Again, I'm going to be objective and criticized. Like, I even criticized Bam earlier to a certain degree, saying he needs to step up. Like, he had an okay game. Like, he needs to shoot better. He needs to box out and rebound better. And he needs to take better shots and not play against Porzingas, like, in the post, um, trying to back him down as one of the best rim protectors. Like, he needs to take Porzingas off the dribble. He needs to shoot that mid-range. Like, he needs to create space or blow by him. So... Bam's not immune to criticism, so Tyler shouldn't be either. Everybody on Twitter was just, like, going crazy, saying everybody owes Tyler an apology. It's like, no, we don't, because, like, we'll say, hey, good job. You're awesome. You did a good job in that game. But when you do bad, I'm going to criticize, too. Like, we're not going to win a series with Tyler Hero and Bam are playing like this. And Tyler's not going to get his flowers um, unless he becomes a consistent player. Like, I'm sorry. But he's not an all-star. He's never been an all-star. He is a star, in my opinion, if we want to categorize it by role player and then like kind of a star role player or star in the rotation and then all-star and then superstar. I guess scrub is then the guys that are kind of out of the rotation. So scrub, role player, star, all-star superstar there's five levels to it and tyler is on like the cusp of that borderline between a role player and a star so like some people call him a high level role player some people want him to be the sixth man you know coming off our bench but i i'm not going to criticize completely because we need him to take shots which he did he took 16 shots we just need him to be consistent and that's the the biggest issue with Tyler hero is he'll have one or two good games and then he's going to have a bad game playoffs. Tell that's what Pat Riley says. Stars will develop and you will see them blossom in front of your eyes. Usually within year three or four, he's in year five. He's been injured a lot. So that's, that's one thing we haven't seen it, but for the games that he's been healthy, his career average has been 14 points per game in the playoffs. And that's not great. That's not bad either. So, Look at the guys that are blossoming. Anthony Edwards is going to be a superstar. Yes, he's a number one pick. It's different, but still, he is blossoming in front of our eyes. He is up next. Look at Shy or Shea Gilgis Alexander, year three or four, or year four. Look at him in the playoffs. He is stepping up like others have done in the past, showing folks that he is a superstar, right? Even all stars. Most of them are consistent. They will have a bad game here and there, but they will then follow it up with like two, three, four good games in a row. So that's my criticism to Tyler is you're always inconsistent. I just need you to be more consistent for us to have a shot, but also for us to classify you as a potential all-star type of player. So anyway, that's enough on Tyler. I said too much. Um, Bench. 17 points off the bench. We had eight from Haywood, seven from Patty Mills, who was forced to play garbage time mostly because of DeLon Wright. Um, Thomas Bryant got to play in garbage time, two points. Kevin Love is out of the rotation, which is kind of head scratching as, as I'm scratching my head now, uh, not intentionally, but four, four minutes, just two rebounds. Didn't even take a single shot. Um, I don't know why he's not playing in there. I think he could match up against an Al Horford. I mean, he's, younger than Al Horford by a couple years. So <clears throat> not sure why he's not getting any time, but we need help from the bench if we're going to win a game. Um, Duncan Robinson, seven minutes, zero shots. He's hurt. He's compromised. Like, what else can we say? Like, it's just, it is what it is right now. We have no Jimmy, we have no Terry, and we have no Duncan, essentially. And it's just, and no DeLon Wright last game. And obviously we have Jay Rich and Drew Smith and whoever else been out for the season it just sucks it does suck but you got to play with what we have and and 
we did great in game two. Game three revert back to like the same tactics as game one. We did some zone, didn't really work out. We didn't shoot the shots that were given to us, which were some open threes. And we, we did shoot threes. Most of them were a little bit contested, tougher shots, and we break them. We only made nine. So, yeah, game four tomorrow, I'll be at the game. Anybody that follows me or watches these videos, if you guys are going to be there, would love to meet you in person. Um, that would be awesome. I saw Brady Hawk yesterday. Got to talk to him for a few minutes um, during the game. Um, I also saw uh, Eric Reed. Got a picture with him. That was awesome. I saw uh, John Crotty as well. So I got to see the voice of the Miami Heat. And I saw a few others, which was fun. Um, I live in San Francisco, not in Miami. So um, just being around the arena, seeing these people that I listen to all the time. Um was awesome. Saw Wes Goldberg from Locked On. I didn't say hi to him, but just saw him walking around. So fun experience, even though it was a horrible loss. But hey, I'm going to be there tomorrow. Going to be there with my boys, Martel and Ernest. Martel from the Miami Heat podcast. Shout out to Martel. Shout out to Ernest from Miami Heat Talk. Go subscribe to the channels. Met these guys, started a show. Haven't met them in person yet. And we are going to sit together and go watch the game. So I am looking forward to that experience. It's going to be surreal. I've never made friends online um, before. So it's going to be fun to see them in person and watch a game with them, hoping the Miami Heat can come back, bounce back, and win a must-win game. This is a must-win game. We don't win this game. We're going to lose to the Celtics at Boston in Game 5. We need to win this game, push it to a six-game series, possibly a seven-game series. Who knows? Maybe Terry Rozier can come back. I'm not expecting him to play tomorrow, but who knows? We'll see. Hopefully we get some good news today around that because we desperately need him, especially with Duncan Robinson being injured and not himself. But anyway, said this is going to be a quick video. Definitely wasn't quick. Long video. Um, I'm going to go out and enjoy this Miami Heat sun, and I will see you guys hopefully tomorrow. Have a good one, guys.